Hi, I'm Zach with HKN, and today we're going to do a problem that has a, an ideal transformer. Um, so, the idea of a transformer is that it can um, it can take an AC an AC signal or AC voltage, say, and it can transform it down to a lower voltage. But its behavior is governed by it, these two equations here because it doesn't. An ideal transformer doesn't use any power, so that means power is is conserved on both sides of it. So the voltage V1 is equal to 25 times V2 on the other side, so you get a, a lot higher voltage over here. But the power I times V needs to be conserved, so that says that. 25 times I1 is equal to I2, you get a lot higher current over here. So you get higher voltage, higher current, and inversely, lower current, lower voltage. Right? Okay, so, so we're going to do some steady state math with this, and we're going to find I1, I2, V1, and V2. So we will... We'll just start using KCL or KVL to get some equations. So let's do KVL around this. Maybe we can get V2 in terms of I2. So we can see that if you go around this loop, the only current in this loop is I2. There's no, there's no current flowing in between these at all. So, so if you go around this loop, you can get the voltage drops using I2. So we'll say the V1 will be equal to the voltage drops. So let's say that. I'm sorry, V2. It's going to be equal to I2 times. We've got 4 ohms and we have negative J 14.4 ohms. So I'll say 4 minus J 14.4. This is ohms. So that's just from KVL around that loop. Now we can use this equation and these two equations from the transformer to to get V V1 in terms of I1. So we know that V1 is equal to 25 times V2. So we have V2. So V1 is equal to 25 times this. V1 is equal to 25 times times I2 times 4 minus J 14.4 Okay, and we also know that I2 is equal to 25 times I1 so we can substitute 25 I1 into this equation where we see I2. So then we'll get that V1 is equal to 25 times 25 again I1 times 4 minus J14.4. Now remember these are this complex number here is just a number where we're treating this thing inside parentheses as like a three or you just multiply stuff by it. It's just a number but you have to keep these components of it separate. That's all. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we can get an equation. Let's see. V1 is equal to 600, huh, 625 I1 times times this number again 4 minus J 14.4 Alright, so we're going to have to start doing um, complex math with this number so I'm going to be pausing and looking on the screen a little bit. So, 
this reduces down to Now, these, this was in ohms, remember, from up here? But we're multiplying it by a really big number, so it's going to become um, on the order of kilo ohms. So I'm going to start, I'm going to be specific about that. Okay, so now we have we have VI is equal to some impedance times I1. So this is kind of saying that V is equal to R times I, which is Ohm's law. Now, this is a useful equation right here. And we'll do KVL around this loop to get another equation to solve for some values. So we're going to say that VS, we know when our source voltage is, it's 25 kilovolts with a phase of zero. But we'll just call it Vs for now. You know that Vs is equal to I1. Well, we need the voltage drops across here. So we're going to call it I1 times their resistances or impedances. So let's say it's equal to I1 times. 1.5 kilo ohms plus J6 kilo ohms. So that's, so we said that Vs, the voltage across there, is equal to this voltage drop, this voltage drop, and then that's the last voltage drop in the loop. So we'll just say it's equal to that plus, plus V1. And now this is just another equation that we got that's, that's true all the time and we have a value for V1 in terms of I1. So we'll just substitute that in here and get that Vs is equal to Now these are in kilo ohms, I'm just kind of shortening it. We'll write it out here. Plus, now that our term for V1 is I1 times 2.5 minus J9. They're also in kilo ohms. Okay, so now we have a, a term that says that has only Vs and I1 as variables in it. And we know the value of Vs, so we can use this to solve for I1. So we'll rearrange this a little bit. We can combine these. We could factor I1 out and then like add the complex numbers. So let's see if I do this right. Vs would be equal to I1 times so we'll, these all add 2.5 plus 1.5 is 4. Now it's still in kilo ohms, and we have plus J6, and we have minus J9, so that would be minus J3. So this would be. in kilo ohms. Okay, so now we also know a value for Vs. So we say that 25 is in kilovolts. Well, let's just keep in mind that's in kilovolts because it just makes it confusing. is equal to I1 times 4 minus J3. And this is in kilo ohms. 
So when we we want a value for I1, we're going to divide by this number right here. And when we divide kilovolts by kilo ohms, we'll get amps. So this gives that, we take this number and we divide it by that. And we'll type it, we typed it into a calculator. And what we get is, by doing that division, is that I1 is equal to, let me see, 5 amps with a phase shift of 216.87.87 degrees. And that's in amps. Okay, so we found one of the values we were looking for. So that's I1. Um, now we could, we should be able to solve for a definite value of V1 with our definite value of I1. Um, let's see here. We have this equation back here again. We have V1 is equal to 2.5 kilo ohms minus J9 kilo ohms times I1, and now we have a value for I1. Okay, so now we have a definite value, a number value for I1. So the rest of the values in the circuit will kind of just flow from that because we have these two equations from the behavior of an ideal transformer. So we have a definite value for this number and somewhere we have a relationship between one of the voltages and one of the currents and we'll just get the rest of the values from this. So the easiest one to get will be I2 since I2 is just equal to 25 times I1 and we have a value for I1. So I2 is going to equal 25 times 25 times 5 with a phase shift of 216.87 degrees. This is in amps. So I2 is equal to 25 times that. That's just equal to 125. And since this has a phase, that or this, yeah, that would have a phase shift of zero. So nothing happens to the phase. Okay, so now this is a value of I2. That's the value of I2, and let's see. We have an equation somewhere that says V1 is equal to 2.5 minus J9 kilo ohms times I1. So we'll use that equation. We have a definite value for I1. So we'll say that V1 is equal to 2.5 minus J9. This is kilo ohms. It's important to keep these values or these the order of these values because we're working with really large differences in voltage and current. So this is equal to V1. Okay, so equal to this times I1, and we have a value for I1. Let's just say, let's just put that in there. This is all multiplied by 5 with a phase shift of 216.87 degrees. Okay, so this is a pretty good example of, so all we have here is that V1 is equal to the multiplication of two numbers, but it's really strange looking because they're both complex and they're in the different forms. And the easiest way to deal with that is just to put it in your calculator. Um, you could put this one in rectangular form and distribute it all and get an answer, but it's not really worth the time because most calculators do it. If we type this into the calculator, it gives us Um, let's put that in. Okay, so this is in kilovolts. 
and that's the value of V1. Uh, that's the value on this side of the transformer. And we know that this, what this does is transforms the voltage down. So V2 is going to be a less than V1 by 25, a factor of 25. So we have this value for V1, and we're just going to divide it by 25 to get V2. And what happens when you do that? Again, we would just take this number in polar form and put it in your calculator and divide the value by 25. So we get V2 is equal to, let's see what that is. Okay, so it's equal to uh, 1868, about 1868 volts. So we see that we went from about 50 kilovolts down to about 1800 volts. 1800 volts is still kind of a lot, but we still got a pretty significant decrease in voltage across there. And But we can see from the values of the currents that the current in our left side is quite a bit larger. It's 125 versus I1 is 5. So that's that's the trade-off, that's the relationship. It just transforms voltage down, current up, or you can do vice versa, depending on how you set it up. No, that's our problem.